evening or is it good uh, good evening i guess uh folks uh it's 10 o'clock in johannesburg it's uh i think about 3 p.m in washington dc it's 7 a.m in australia it's um i think 5 a.m in tokyo japan and of course uh just about um i think eight o'clock in london um i want to just have a little conversation with uh, the people of matavale land this evening yesterday i had a chat with the citizens of zimbabwe in general but today i just want to have a chat specifically with the citizens of matavale land and the message that I'm bringing to us today, this night, is we are now responsible for our own suffering. Yeah, you heard me. We are now responsible for our own suffering. Now, since um, the death of Dr. Joshua Ngong, we as a people have had a lot of opportunities to free ourselves. Now, obviously, there used to be this old excuse that we're doing it for him because he left us here in Zanu, and therefore, you know, we are still here. Uh, to paraphrase Moses Mzilan you know, if Dr. Joshua Ngoma didn't leave his children in Zanu, why would he leave you or anybody else in Zanu? So I'm just thinking to myself, by 1999-2000, since then, we have had about four elections. And uh, true to form, we led the way in the resistance against the ZAN, and that is to be tremendously applauded. In fact, Matevele Land has always led the way in the struggle for freedom against oppressive forces, whether you're talking about the uh, Rhodesians or the Gugra Hundist of Mugabe and the like. Now, one thing that I want to address today is the fact that in our efforts to free ourselves, uh, we did something that in my mother language, Chikalanga, we would call Chibudza Nachonghai Chutlila Chitihilakumen, something like a kid that belongs to a poor man. When it runs away, it runs toward the hyena. And of course, you know what's going to happen in that. So, I just want to talk to the issue of us being responsible for both our suffering and our freedom. Now, what do I mean by this? In these elections that have happened, we have voted en masse for what was then the MDC, turned out later to become MDCT, and uh, at this time is something like MDC allies or something like that. Now, the problem that this raises for us is that from the beginning, in 1980, we were never responsible for the installation of ZANU or Mugabe into power. Our population as a region is just not enough to make a dent on whether Mugabe stays in power or is removed. As history has proven, since 1980, we have rejected Mugabe and the ZANU, but because of the majority Shona vote, he has remained in power. And now we are being told that to remove Mugabe, Matevele Land has to, quote unquote, unite with Mashona Land to remove Mugabe. I mean, they claim themselves that they are the majority, there are many. So the question, if they are such a super majority, why do they need our vote to remove their goblin? I don't know why they need our vote because we are allegedly only constituting 20% constituting of the population, which is a lie, by the way. Uh, in, a, in an article that I did a few years ago, I argued that actually Shona's constitute just about 60% of the population in the country. But that's a debate for another day. But what I want to drive to is that Matevele Land, we cannot continue to vote for Mashona Land-based parties 
and expect freedom. You cannot give power to your oppressor and expect that your oppressor is going to give you freedom. They are not. And if anything we have learned is that Morgan Tsvangirai and his MDC team, despite being voted for and masked by people from Machiavelli Land, he has done, in fact, outdone Mugabe in our oppression, in his tribalistic tendencies against our people. We all know the people that he went on to select into his cabinet in the formation of the GNU. We all know how he sided with Mugabe against the Professor Mugabe when it was supposed to be time for him to become DPM. And we know how Bulawa has just been flooded with people from Ashonaland, particularly even in the council, something that the ZANU probably was even shy to do, embarrassed to do, Morgan Tsongara and his party have not been afraid to do, planting Shona councillors all the way in Marula, in Doluan, and many other places, not to mention just Bulawai. And now what I'm saying is, the reason I'm saying that we are now responsible for our suffering is, if we continue to give our vote to machinal and based parties, we will continue to lose out. We will continue to be oppressed. So what are the alternatives that we have? Now, I just want to present to us just a few alternatives. As those of you that follow my writings will know that I've argued a lot and continue to speak for a regional coalition. Maybe this is time to actually address the leaders of Machiavelli, the Moses Mzillas, the Welshman Nubes, the Dabenguas, the Mkondis Moyos, and the like, the Gordon Moyos, the Togozani Kupes. If Machiavelli will be free, we need our own formidable coalition as a region. We need a strong political movement that is going to capture and retain power on behalf of the people of Machiavelli and make sure that the people of Machiavelli have a political voice. This thing that we always go to deputize Shona leaders in their own parties, it is not going to help us. When you're a deputy, it simply means you're always there to assist the agenda of the president, whether you're in MDCT, you're in PDP, you're in ZANU, you're in NPP, whatever those national parties they are. As long as we do not have our own alternative, we remain a people without freedom. I want to give you the examples of the Western Cape and um, KZN. And the founding of South Africa is a democracy. During the Codesa negotiations, I think some of you, those that are knowledgeable about that, you had a party standing in what is now DA in the Western Cape to defend the interests of the Western Cape. You had the IFP in KZN defending the interests of KZN. And that is why South Africa became the federation that it is today, what they call cooperative governance. So we in Zimbabwe, as long as we live with this so-called one center of power theme or democratic centralism, where we think that there is so-called national parties, the devolution that is mentioned in the constitution will simply remain just that. Nice letters in a nice piece of paper, useless to anybody. So if we will realize and get the devolution that we want, we need formidable regional movements that will fight for it. The reason ZANU is not bothered to even do anything about devolution is because, I mean, there is nobody to fight in, parla in parliament. Strange enough, MDCT is not serious about the whole thing. They didn't even want devolution from the beginning. So that's why they can't even fight for it. But imagine if we had our own formidable, strong, solid, materially regional coalition. That will give us strength to fight for implementation of devolution, to galvanize our people to stand up and fight for themselves. Whether it means closing down Baybridge border post and the highway, Plumtree border post, Victoria Falls, if it means all of that in order to get the government in Harare to listen, that can only happen if people have a formidable movement to rally around. But as long as we don't, we lose out. 
we always go to Shona parties as deputies. And as long as we go that way, we don't have any power. So I would like to invite us that let's begin to think thoroughly about, you know, if we want to form any strategic alliances at national level, let us do so, go as a block, not just as deputies and chairmen and useless positions that don't have any power. But if we go there as a formidable regional movement, coalition, the reason I keep saying coalition is because I don't think MRP can do it on their own. I don't think ANSA can do it on their own. I don't think ZAPU can do it on their own. We need each other. And it's time for ZAPU, ANSA, MRP, and everything in between, PDP. Well, I'm talking about the leaders from Atebelele. To begin to think to ourselves that is it about getting a position in a so-called national party or is it about really giving a voice in an alternative to our people? If it is about giving our people an alternative, then we need to unite and coalesce together. From Venda to Victoria Falls, from Plumtree to Loa Guelum, we need to stand together and stem out the tide of Shona imperialism that is brought by NDCT, by ZANU, and interestingly and unfortunately by the churches. I know that sounds strange, but that is the fact. We are being swallowed and consumed as a region. The intention is to completely overrun our region to such an extent that in the future, they will completely outvote us. And it will not surprise us one day to wake up to find that our MPs have names and surnames completely foreign to our region. And as we know, they always work for their interests. So as long as we keep giving away our vote, we remain responsible for our own suffering. And the only way to be responsible for our own freedom is to now coalesce and say, as we go into the next election, whether it is 2018, 2023, hopefully we won't have to go that far, still fighting the same battles, but we need to now begin to think about building a formidable movement. And let me speak directly to MRP. There is no doubt that you're making the right noises. Now, I have my own disagreements with you, especially particularly regarding the issue of restoration, which is really secession, because world history proves that it is not possible apart from you know, a bloody civil war. Unless you can wage a thorough war, then it is not going to be realized. But nonetheless, step by step, we can get there. I think you've seen what is happening in Catalonia, you've seen what is happening in Scotland, and if answer, which is a core devolutionist federalist movement that is, has cast itself as fighting strictly for Machiavelli and MRP were to unite, or at least, well, let me not say unite, coalesce is a better word. That will bring enormous difference to our people's psycho, community psychology. The moment people understand that we now have an alternative of our own, It'll send a shockwave of hope that, yes, we have our own political home as a region. So if we can...